Summer 1984, Honolulu, Hawaii. My uncle Jimmy took my siblings and me to see the movie, The Never Ending Story. As an eight year old, this movie was epic. I mean, we're talking epic. <laughs> but over the course of time, as we build things up in our mind, when we revisit them as adults, we tend to find that the magic from our childhood is lost. And that's because of a change in our perspective. Let me demonstrate this with a video clip. Today's technology is transforming the way that we communicate and interact with one another. It's changing the way that we live our lives, and it's having a profound impact on education. I'm going to share my experience as a teacher, then a district educational technology specialist, and now as an administrator, to illustrate how my plugged-in perspective is, in con is constantly in flux to meet the needs of my educational goals. The last four years in the classroom, I was an EMINTS teacher. Now, when I described that to friends and family, I would tell them that it was a technology-engaged classroom, <clears throat> and we had one computer for every two students. Now, I love the training model of EMINTS. You're paired with a coach. This was mine, Pat. Um, she strongly influenced me to actually apply for the ed tech position at the district level when she retired. But over the course of our professional development for two years, we would meet twice a month for a couple of hours and Pat would visit my classroom on a regular basis. My experience of integrating technology with my students in the classroom molded my pedagogical perspective. And that is that technology integration in the classroom should be seamless, embedded, and ubiquitous. Now my wife told me you should define ubiquitous and I told her, eh, I'm speaking to educators, but in case there is someone in the room who doesn't know, let's look at it this way. Teachers, learners, and observers don't typically notice learning tools such as a desk, paper, or pencils. This is the same case, this is the same case that we should have for technology integration. Effective technology integration should be a subset or an embedded component of good pedagogy. It's what we do as learning in our classrooms. Now last year in the classroom, we decided to create a class blog. Of course, we didn't have access at school. So the first week of school, I took my students down to the local library and got them all library cards. By the end of the year, my 25 students and their families had visited our class blog over 1,300 times. Now, I know that this isn't viral, but I also know that it wasn't my mother who had gone and clicked on this 1,300 times. <laughs> so what were we putting on our class blog? My students really got into podcasting that year. They really enjoyed creating videos that was content specific. And we did a myriad of other projects. And I believe that the reason they were so enthusiastic to produce quality work was because they knew that they had a global audience in our class blog and with the internet. My perspective as an ed educational technology specialist changed. And I learned that with working with teachers, I had to help them change their mindset or their perspective. And that meant moving from an expert to a learner. This is an Inspire calculator. Um, in taking a group of undergrad students in a class I teach at Westminster, 
Uh, we observed a first-hand experience of a teacher using this brand new technology with his class for the first time. And I have to give a shout out here to that teacher, Roger, who is one of my favorite teachers. It was the first time they were using this technology in the classroom. And rather than the teacher first becoming an expert with it, he was learning alongside his students. And I want to repeat that. The teacher was learning with the students, knowing that problems could arise, but assuring them that they could do this together. It's been my experience that professional development, whether it be technology or other subjects, should be strategic, contextual, ongoing, and collaborative. And all of this has happened at Northwest Middle School in, Salt, in the Salt Lake City School District. In 2010, Northwest Middle School received a federal technology grant. I've spent the last three years there training teachers and supporting them in integrating technology into their instruction. Student achievement across all subjects has improved. So from three years ago, math scores have gone up 40% for a school average of 79%. Language arts, um, language arts has gone up 22% for a school average of 80%. And science has gone up 21%. I give all the credit to the administrators, teachers, students, and everyone involved. The culture and, pers and perspective at Northwest Middle School has changed since we implemented the grant. Technology has become ubiquitous. It's just another learning tool. And with that, we've noticed that there are new levels of engagement and creativity. I will admit to all of you that I am very new to being an administrator. So by my calculations, it's been three months two days, um, six hours, and I'm not quite sure about the time on this clock, but I think about like 37 minutes. Um, <laughs> but again, my perspective has changed. So now I'm looking at finding tools for my entire staff that will meet the learning needs of our students, that's cost effective, and that we can use in a timely manner and implement. Just last weekend, I was attending a conference and I overheard two principals discussing which was the best mobile platform for their respective schools. Now, I won't tell you which platform they chose. I don't want to start a rumble today as you see in those cell phone commercials. Um, but, but the point was, the principals wanted something that their teachers and their students could either learn to use quickly or that they already knew. And they wanted something that they didn't need to, that would take up a lot of time installing applications or updating. And I totally agree with them. That's what I want. I also have to stress that it's not digital tools that guarantee success in our schools. Rather, it's our perspective. And the question is and should be, how are we using technology to best meet the needs of our students and teachers? The Wright brothers spent the summers of 1899 to 1900 in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, testing manned gliders. Now they were unsuccessful in their results. And so what they did is they went back and looked at the data that they were using from German engineer Otto Lilienthal when they discovered the information he'd provided them was incorrect. So what they chose to do, they spent the course of another year going in and creating their own data. They used wind tunnels, they changed um, they changed wing uh, designs, and they ran many tests. And in the course of another year, because they changed their perspective, they were able to achieve manned flight success. The longer I'm part of education and the more that my roles change, I have more respect for this quote from Pablo Picasso. I'm always doing that which I cannot do in order that I may learn how to do it. Now we don't know what the future of education holds. I don't know what it's going to look like in 20 years. Heck, I don't even know what it's going to look like five years down the road. But the one thing that I do know is that things will continue to change. Changes in our teaching perspective will change our teaching practices, 
which will influence our students' lives. About a month ago, at a professional development day for our district, a teacher approached me in the hallway with an enormous smile on her face. And she said, the technology classes I took from you this summer have changed the way that I teach. And I thought about it, and it's this teacher, it's her renewed passion for teaching resulted in a change of perspective. If we look at the course of human civilization, and we take time to think about it, a change in perspective has changed the world. And I believe that it is our change in perspective that will change the world. Thank you.